Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and here we are with a kind of first impressions look at Project Cars. I say kind of because it's not a first impressions. Many of you know I already did a video on Project Cars about a year, two years ago as one of the early backers on the project, but now it's released. I thought I would do a now it's released kind of first impressions. What you're looking at right now is a replay of a run I just did. It didn't end too well. I span out a little bit and then knocked my microphone over, so not too good. But what we're going to cover in this video is what is different from the early access stuff. A lot of you saw the early access videos, a lot of you saw my early access video. So what is different? How does it stand up when compared to something like Assetto Corsa or R Factor 2? We have a lot of very cool race sims out there right now. And this is the uh, obviously latest entry and, and undoubtedly probably the best looking of the bunch. I mean, it really is a beautiful sim to look at. And I call it a sim because it is a sim. This is a full on racing sim. And I've got the PS4 version and the PC version. The PS4 version and PC version are pretty much, except for some minor graphical issues, identical. You know, same options, same everything, except for some minor graphical stuff that you're going to get the benefit of on PC, of course, that you're not going to see on PS4. But overall, they're identical, and that's important because this is a full race sim. And as such, it's got a bunch of options which are going to confuse the hell out of console owners. And I'll cover those probably in a second video because I really want to cover some of the complexity behind setting up and configuring this. Because configuration out of the box is not pleasant. When you first fire this up, oh, that was a nasty slide and there's my wreck. Awesome. When you first fire this up out of the box, it is not the best sim you've ever played or raced or taken part in. It's actually a bit of a pain and not very pleasant. You need to do a bit of tweaking to get it to work really, really well. I'm going to show you that. Anyway, let's get out of this replay session. Now, one of the things I love about this that they've changed, I last looked at the early access quite some time ago. I actually stopped looking at it because I didn't like how it was going. And I had got a set of Corsa at that point, and I much preferred a set of Corsa. So I kind of stopped looking at Project Cars and thought, okay, we'll see when it comes out. Some of the stuff that I noticed is different. I can now navigate with my steering wheel. So it's pretty smart. It recognizes the kind of steering wheel or, or controls you're using. You can navigate with controls. You don't need access to the keyboard. I like that. So I can switch between pages here. Now this is an interesting point as well. I know we're not racing right now, but this is very critical to understanding Project Cars. You have a lot of these multi-screen pages. So right now we're on Play Now and I can go over to My Home. You see there's two separate screens of information here. And that's somewhat confusing when you get into things like options. Let's go down here into options. And I don't mean to be very Total Biscuit, but I think this is worth seeing. So let's go down to controls, for example. Now we have control scheme, configuration, edit assignments, and then within edit assignments, there are sub pages. Look, motion, Vi whoops, I pressed the wrong button. Hang on, let me back out of that. The driver it's network. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the driver network. Hang on, I'm gonna grab the mouse because it kind of lost track of what I was doing with the controls there. Okay, so within here, I got motion, vehicle, assistance, camera and view, game. You gotta be aware of that. There are sometimes hidden pages of options which can confuse and confound. In while we're in options, I guess we will go the full total biscuit route here. Look what you have for visuals. On the PC at least. So we've got post-processing effects, the ability to change how it looks on the fly and apply uh, very, very cool EMB type effects and make everything look very, very different and unique and stunning. You have that in there. We've also got performance stuff. So currently running at 60 hertz, 1080p. I can put it in a window, I can turn an isotropic on or off, I can turn V-Sync on or off, anti-aliasing, FXAA, SMAA, all the top of the line, state of the art effects are all in there. I've turned some things down because I have noticed that even on my machine, which is a bit of a beast, I am getting some stutter in places. So I turn down detailed grass, I turn down the particles, uh, I'm only using MSAA and I turned FXAA to medium and SMAA off, just to get some little speed out of this go to hardware here we got other stuff that nobody understands yet like VR prediction no idea what that means um, using shared memory yes or no well obviously no I've got a dedicated graphics card just a tweak you can try to get rid of the jitters by putting in that tweak there don't fully understand what that does but awesome let's get back into the game proper now everything happens from this play now screen and you'll see there's a few things in here that we haven't seen prior to release obviously so there's a career mode now there's an online mode there is the driver network which is pretty awesome we still have quick race weekend here where you can very quickly set up a race we still have free practice right here we have randoms down here which is very cool you also have on my home the garage we're going to come back to this in a second video, and I'll show you why we're going to come back to this. So I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of a teaser for the next video here. Look, 
if we go into options, now I have a Fnatic CSR Elite wheel here, I have Fnatic Club Swap pedals. By the way, this is the first race sim I have ever played which supports force feedback through the Club Sport pedals if the pedals are used as a separate USB device. That's pretty awesome, has won me over greatly. But anyway, let's go in here to controls. Check this out. So. I've set it up with automatic clutch, but a manual gearing, everything's great. I've calibrated my wheel, I've calibrated my pedals, but look, if we go into calibrate force feedback, this is where things get confusing. You have all these different force feedback settings, many of which are not obvious at first glance. Like what the hell is tire force? What the hell is uh, dead zone removal range? Why do we have that? Um, what, there's another one down here, scoop. What is a scoop knee, for example? What is scoop reduction? These are all very, very important because out of the box, if you're using a force feedback or steering wheel, obviously they can't account to everybody's tastes and everybody's individual configurations of wheels. Many of the wheels, like the Fnatic, like the Thrustmaster, for example, the high-end Thrustmaster, are fully configurable in the wheel themselves. So rather than give a set of presets which uh, the people behind Project Cars think would apply to everybody, they've given you the options to customize everything and I say that because this is not the only force feedback page check this out I'm gonna go back out of here and back on my home we have the garage my garage my garage depending on where you're from so I got my Renault Clio here watch this if I go and edit the setup you can see all the normal stuff there that you would expect when editing the setup of a car. So toe-in angle, downforce, rebound, fast bump, and so on and so on. All the very, very complex stuff that you would expect to see in a racing sim to customize how the car performs, but it gets deeper. Look, there's a second page right there, force feedback, which gives you force feedback customization per vehicle because no two vehicles are the same. So the force feedback settings, for example, that work well on a Renault Clio are not the force feedback settings that work really well in a Formula One car. But there's more even than this. This is just one page of the force feedback settings for an individual car. There's actually two pages. Look, bump. <laughs> there's more there. SOP is seat of the pants. What does the seat of the pants force feedback feel like? Body scale is how much your physical body is affected by G-forces driving the car and how that translates into the load on your controls. So we're gonna do a separate video on how to set this up because as I said a few times now, out of the box, many of the cars in project cars feel absolutely awful. They feel like giant floating boats. They're horrible. They don't turn very well. You get very little feedback they're hard to drive they're hard to get a good time in this is why it's the force feedback settings so i'm going to do a whole separate video explaining project cars force feedback and what i have figured out um everything in here means but without with, without going through it right now i'm going to get out of here look how beautiful that is by the way i'm going to get all the way out of here and we're going to go and race a car and show you how all of that works so back on play now let's go into free practice now, as you just saw, I was racing on California Highway. By the way, that's one of the better tracks to set up your force feedback on because you have jumps, you have bumps, you have shifts in camber of the road, you have tight turns, you have long sweeping turns. It's an aggressive road to drive on, not a racetrack, a proper road. So I'm gonna go in for a little drive here and show you what it's like. I have this car really dialed in for my force feedback settings. So I'm not really gonna talk through the force feedback stuff other than telling you that when you have it correct, when you have all that force feedback stuff really set up just the way you want it to be for the car you are about to drive, I believe it is the single most realistic force feedback experience outside of Game Stock Car. Game Stock Car being uh, kind of a, 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 the underdog, I guess, in the current sim lineup, race sim lineup, compared to a set of Corsa, which looks beautiful, or Project Cars, which looks even more beautiful. Game Stock Car doesn't look that beautiful, but it is. I still believe the most realistic racer out there and it has absolutely without doubt the best force feedback. Project Cars, if you spend the time tweaking stuff and tuning your force feedback is almost as good as Game Stock Car. People are going to disagree with me but I wanted to explain why that is and that is because it's customizable. Anyway, let's go and drive. So what do we have here? I'm in my Renault Clio. I can, in some cars, change the LCD. I'm clicking the button which changes it. It's not changing it in this car, but the LCD you can see there you can change in some cars. Obviously, being a console game, there's an over-the-shoulder camera that we're not going to use ever because that's just silly. It's a sim. You should be inside. Um, we also have overlays we can pop open. Look, 
I can do one of those. I can see all sorts of GeForce readouts and temperatures. I can do, what else can I do? I get a little short display down there, lap one of one, I'm position one of one. Look at my tire temperatures, my speed, my gear, and so on. You can dial all these things up and down, on and off. They're completely customizable as well and configurable. It's really pretty damn awesome. I'm gonna leave it right there and we'll go for a little drive. So manual gears, but using automatic clutch. The clutch stimulation in this is, is vicious which is why I'm going automatic clutch. Now, because I have the force feedback dialed in, I'm feeling the weight on the wheel increase as I brake, and the weight of the vehicle shifts to the front of the car, obviously the steering part. I feel the vehicle go light as I accelerate, or the steering go light. I feel it lighten up and go heavy as we go over jumps and bumps. I'm feeling just the right amount of feedback from the force feedback to really get a good idea of what this car is doing and how to best control it. Now obviously I'm going slower than the replay you just saw because I'm talking to you guys. Just wanted to get you a, a sense of what this is like to actually drive and I'm going a little wide there, there we go. I could feel that, I could feel the back stepping out, getting a bit of a judder through the wheel as I was losing traction there. And again, whoa, back end coming around a little bit, which is interesting and a bit of a challenge to do on a front wheel drive car like a Renault Clio. All right, up the hill we go. Lots of changes in camber, lots of subtle changes in the elevation of the road, lots of bumps and dips. This is a wonderful, wonderful course to really spend time tweaking and tuning and making sure the sim itself is where you want it to be. Not so much the race car settings because that's gonna vary from track to track, but just the sim itself in terms of things like force feedback. You're gonna see as we come up here, changes in lighting as well which is great, especially when you come out of a tunnel or go under trees like we're about to do. Look at this. Very hard to judge where the road went because of the tree shadows. One of the problems that drivers have at Monza, incidentally, on the Formula One circuit. Oh, loading up there and off we go. Once you do crash like that, you can press escape and we can go and reset. We can view a replay. I'll do the replay once again. And in the replay here, it's a little odd at first, Still feels like it's a little bit in development, honestly. We're, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We haven't moved off yet. But once you do start moving off, you can hide the UI, you can bring it back, change the camera. All the usual stuff. There is a photo mode as well. That was an interesting view, look, from the driver's helmet. Not that one, that one. So the sound, ever so subtly muffled because of the padding on the uh, safety helmet around the driver's ears. Amazing touch. Have not tried this with Track IR yet. Have not tried this with Oculus Rift yet. I know that it does support Oculus Rift. I had untold issues getting the Rift to work in the uh, pre-release early access stuff. So I haven't bothered for a while on this game with Oculus Rift, but I'm told it's pretty stunning. Look at that, beautiful stuff. As we accelerate there, you can see the focus on that steering wheel going slightly blurred based on the, the vibration through the car. Stunning level of detail. Now, one of the other changes that we have in here, which I'm very happy about, last time I did a video on this, I said that, let's hope we didn't quit the game here. This UI is awkward in places. I said that it was a little bit of a shame that the project hadn't managed to secure licenses for the tracks. That has changed. They now have licenses for almost all of the tracks. So here's California Highway Full. Let's pop this open. There's Brands Hatch, for example, fully licensed. There's Bathurst. Azure Coast is the Monaco track, so that's one of the unlicensed ones. You get the idea, right? But then uh, the track that was previously known as Northampton is now listed in here as Silverstone. So they have the GP version, the international, and the national versions, and Silverstone Stowe as well, which is very, very cool. Let's pick up the Silverstone GP track. And let's go ahead and change our car here, and I'll show you the vehicles. Stunning list of vehicles, including some fictitious ones that were kind of brought up and invented by Vote in the early access program. But we have shifter carts here. We have the Alpine, the Aerial Atoms, the Aston Martin Rapids, as well as the Vantage, the V12, and the V8 version of the Vantage. We have classic cars in here as well. If you go look at the BMWs up here. That's a road-going, cheapy one series. Yuck. Uh, there's a better car, <laughs> the 320, there's the M1 Pro car, the M3 right there, a car that I'm very uh, fond of because I used to have an M3. Uh, the GT4, the Z4, Z4 GT3, and we have some classics down here like Ford Escort. Look at that, the Ford Escort Mark 1 RS 1600. Before there was a Cosworth, there was the Mark 1 RS 1600. We have, let's go further down here, look at this. 
Ford Sierra, RS500 Cosworth, Group A, a Capri of all things, then various Formula cars, A, B, C, Golf, Rookie, and so on. We even have classic Formula One races. Look at this. Lotus 49 Cosworth, the 72D Cosworth, the 78 Cosworth, the 98 Turbo Renault Turbo Lotus. Brilliant, brilliant. Absolutely amazing lineup of cars in here. Everything you could ever want to do from open wheel go-karting to saloon car racing, it is stunning. We're gonna pick up one of the Beamers. We'll pick up the Z4, Z4. Again, I have to be conscious of where people are from, if I say Z or Z. So we're gonna take that out. We're gonna take it out for a spin around Silverstone. You can change the weather, you can change the ambient lighting, temperature, all sorts of stuff. Wind, it's pretty damn cool. So it's gonna throw this around the racetrack for a little bit and see how we do. And then I'm gonna put it in a race because the AI is actually pretty good. I'm surprised at how good the AI is. So drive. Now, the sim is driving at this point, not me. Let's pop in for some overlays. Look at those overlays. I'll leave those up. It has control of you in the pits, which is great. It reduces the uh, possibility of overspeeding in the pits and getting a penalty in a race. It's a little boring though in that you have to be ready for it to go, your turn, and then hit the gas. Now, cold tires. I need to be very conscious of cold tires here. Down into second gear. Turn the wheel, don't be afraid to turn the wheel, but do be afraid to get on the gas viciously in second gear in this particular car, especially with cold tires, because that will happen. Oh, managed to hold it. Wrong gear though, there we go. Let me get rid of those really quite distracting overlays and let's just focus on racing. So you can hear maybe subtly the wind noise, which is great. They've really built out this track from the early access as well. All the buildings are where they should be now. It all looks pretty damn good. Oh, fighting there as the car wants to slip to the outside of that turn. Then we have this tightening turn onto the start finish straight oh no giving it the power third gear cutting as close in as we can fourth gear a little bit too much on the red line fifth gear heading down now to cops I'm gonna try not to bleed too much speed here but it is not a Formula One car so we are gonna lose some as good as we're gonna get now it's the test of the nerves of steel whether you can hold fifth gear or sixth gear through this left right left right hander no I can't I'm a little bit too frightened. I'm gonna drop it down now. Trying not to let the car break away. I can feel it starting to break away on the back. And away we go now. And we'll just finish one lap on this up above the replay. This car is stunning in the replay. Lots of backfires and flames coming out of the pipes. Sounds great. Looks great. Probably a little bit too slow, but again, I am speaking to you people which makes life a little bit more complex than just driving around a racetrack. But I do promise when we do the replay, I will shut up and you can just listen. Because it's worth it. That was a horrible, horrible combination there. There we go. Sorry, that wasn't cops at the back there, was it? This is cops coming up here. Trying to hold as much speed through here. Look at the car jostling around, bouncing. Nice, tires are warming up nicely now. Still don't want to overcook it here. We did. We got penalized for going off track. Doesn't really matter, it's a free practice session. better than the last time. Still not amazing though. Went a bit too wide there. See if we can get back on the line without spinning out. That'll do just fine. So let's quit out of that and look at the replay and I will be quiet and let you just listen.
that done. Let's go look at how it races. Now the AI is not... Um, I have to compare the Game Stock Car again. I know a set of Corsa is the trendier one to look at. But Game Stock Car for me has the best AI and the best force feedback of any sim. So not quite up to Game Stock Car standards, but still pretty damn good. And the key with any race sim is to race it like a sim. As long as you're not driving around the track trying to ram other people, they're usually pretty good. The AI is usually pretty good at adapting and driving like a race car driver as long as you do. If you start trying to rear end people or turn around on the track and ram people head on, obviously you're not going to have a good experience. That's not really the best way to do these things. So quick, quick race weekend. I'm going to change the track here. We're going to go back to Silverstone. In fact, we can actually go to Monza. I haven't done Monza here. I think Monza's in here. Um, I remember Monza is in here, but it's not called Monza. I might have to just skip that one. Uh, let's see what's here. Azure Circuit. No, 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 no. Bathurst would be awesome, but a very quick race in, in that we would smash into a wall very soon after starting. Let me just browse through this list briefly. No, I, I seem to remember we had a, a, a Monza in the early access and now we don't. So I'm going to leave it on the Silverstone GP track and we will switch back over to the Z4s. Got Mustang bosses there as well. Amazing. There's the Z4. We'll pick that up. All right. So let's go ahead and do a 20 lap race. We're not going to do a 20 lap race. Probably only about two or three laps, but you'll get an idea of how everything performs here. Let's get rid of this. You have a spotter, kind of, crew chief who calls stuff out to you. Tells you how you're doing, tells you your position, tells you to push, 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 and keep away from the cars that are trying to beat you. It's pretty good. Here we go. Concentrate on the light. Let's make a great start and make up for calling. Green, green, green. Go, go, go. See that car jumping straight over to get a better line into that first white hander. Oh, I got hit. We held it. We got hit again and again. It happens. It's not Formula One. Now, I want to be able to turn my head. I don't have track IR on at the moment, so I can't. I need to be conscious of my cold tires and the fact that these cars are fairly aggressive at trying to overtake or undertake in that particular instance. That smoke one of them just putting a tire off there onto the grass. Getting a good run now. Whoa, back off Rubble. On the brakes. Try to hold as much speed through here as we can. Back end going a little sideways. He got me down into second gear again. Trying not to ram the other cars. Look at those graphics. Aren't they amazing? We've lost a few positions. I can change the LCD in this car, so we're currently ninth. in here, don't want to bleed too much speed through this turn as we head into the left-right, left-right combination. Gently down through those gears, try to make it flow. Back end coming out again, pushing a little bit hard to try to catch these cars in front of me right now. Now, the AI is set on a percentage level. It's not easy, medium, hard, it's percentage. These are currently 80%. So there's quite some challenge ahead as we step this up, as you can see. Whoa! There goes the back. Oh, I lost it, I lost it, I lost it. But that's fine. I'm not gonna do a whole race. I wanna show you the replay and you can see how that looks with a full grid of cars. Let me get rid of that mouse, sorry about that. Now you saw a little judder there, that's what I'm talking about with some of the juddering on the frame rate. Not sure what's going on with that, it happens from time to time. It's never usually a big issue. And you already saw there, the AI make mistakes, which is great. Nothing worse than having an AI that seems to drive on rails, never makes a mistake. Always holds a single line all the way around, doesn't get out of your way. I love that they are somewhat smart. Look, him just closing the door on me. Amazing mood there, just slamming that door shut. There's the back end sliding out. 
rear wheel steering. It looks absolutely amazing. To coin my own phrase, phenomenal. It looks beautiful, it sounds good. Once you dial in force feedback and the car's uh, setup, in particular your control setup for the car, not so much the car's setup, it is amazing, amazing, amazing. too much into that corner we put a wheel on the grass and that's the end of that game brilliant stuff you can see the clag all over the racetrack there as well little baubles of rubber that the tires have put off great stuff so the only other thing to show you I guess is career mode which in itself is pretty damn cool I don't like races that kind of lock you in and say you can't do anything until you've invested at least 40 hours I don't like that we buy a racing game to go racing and the, the, the advantage of a game over going to a racetrack is you can do anything you like whenever you like. So let's not lock us in. I'm going to start a new career here. So you can all use your stuff here. So uh, we are frugal. Whoops, that's not working. Frugal, YouTube, frugal simp. I can change my car number here. I can set my nationality. Obviously United Kingdom is way down the bottom. Now you can choose a scenario. So zero to hero, win the LMP1 World Championship within 10 seasons. You must start the game in tier eight. I'll explain what that is in a second. Defending champion, can you hold a defense of the championship for three consecutive years? You must start in tier two or above. And then triple crown, can you win three championships in three different motorsport disciplines, just like Travis Pastrana did? Very cool. We're gonna choose triple crown just to show you what happens, I think. So we'll click on, no, these aren't going. Oh, no, no, you don't choose these. You just go and start in the tier. So having said in your name and your nationality, then you get to choose the tier you're going to start in. So we have tier one through tier eight. You can do anything you like. So this is cart one. This is super cart. This is Formula FIR. This is touring. FG 1000, Formula Golf, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. You can start wherever the heck you want. So if we wanted to start our career in the endurance series, it's not going to let me do that because it's not lit up, but I can... Oh, he wants me to work up. So I start in LMP2 and work my way up. That's pretty cool. So I could start uh, Prototype. Prototype 2. Here's my offer letter. Great. Thanks for signing me up. Prototype 2. You'll start out in one of several national series and race to earn yourself a seat in the Euro Semi Pro Championship. Each round features two races. Points are scored by the top 10 finishers. Bonus points are awarded for fastest qualifying time and fastest race lap time. The pit lane is open for refueling, repairs, and tire changes. Time to get in your car and hit the track. Pretty cool, so you get a nice intro. And then the helpful lady will talk you through stuff. <coughs> you also have fan chat here, which is like Twitter, which invariably insults me as I don't do very well. We have an inbox here. And again, if this is the first time through, it will give you information at the bottom of the screen and talk you through what's going to go on. So introduction here for my race engineer, introduction from the team. That's all great stuff. Uh, I can look this at results. I can, results here we go. Every motorsport in the career calendar. Here you, you get the idea. So you can monitor all the other session, all the other uh, race um, championships that are going on as well there. I can look at overview. It's very, very cool. I can watch the video introduction again if I want to. Let's go into home, click on calendar, now here's my first race, so I can click on that. Round one of three, practice session, US Semi-Pro Cup. Driving one of these things, which look mental. Never done this, haven't set the car up. Let's just try it and see what it's like. Now this isn't gonna be pleasant because I haven't set the car up. Again, that's the subject of the next video, how to set up at least your controls for the car, in particular force feedback. But just wanna show you what this looks like when we get in here. Here we go. So I can edit my tuning strategy, all the force feedback stuff, as well as the car itself, my pit strategy for the actual race, or I can just jump in a car and go drive. Here we go. Not sure what he's waiting for. 
There we go. Go, go, go. go, go. Computer's driving right now. Late in the afternoon, that low sunlight's going to be a problem here. No idea what this car is set up like at all. It's my first time driving this class. Oh, we're up. Whoa! That's what it's set up like. It's set up vicious, and that's the problem that I was explaining at the start of the video. If you don't spend time and go through and really configure these cars to your controls, that happens, and you have no idea why, and it just feels like the car is just permanently broken. It's not. You are. Admittedly, they maybe could have done a better job at configuring things, but they didn't. But they did give us all the tools we need to do it ourselves. I have zero force feedback in this car. I have really no idea what the car is doing, and that's what it feels like. So, if you are somebody that just bought this prior to watching my video, maybe some of what you're seeing now feels very familiar to you. But you can't even complete a single lap of any track. The car wants to slide off. It just feels horrible. Force feedback is just broken. That's why. You need to go mess with the options. Watch the next video. Which, by the way, will be out. If not tomorrow, then the day after. He went wide. I went wide. He's obviously having issues with his force feedback too. Oh my god. Awful. Let's stop right there. <laughs> Maybe we can look at a replay and see what happens. Let me skip the replay a little bit here because it's going to hold us in the pit for an interminable amount of time. Beautiful car. So let me summarize Project Cars. Now, I had a friend of mine, another YouTuber, Malekit Scardi, reached out to me last night as I was racing this and said, is it worth it? I'm thinking of buying a G27 just for this game. Is it worth it? Yes, it is absolutely worth it. But if you're expecting a console experience on your console, forget it. This is a racing simulator. It is very hardcore, very realistic. You need to invest the time to really configure things to your preferences. There is an easy mode. You can turn on assist, like braking assist, cornering assist, and all that good stuff. Uh, slip control, you know, traction control, ABS. You can turn all those things on and really dumb it down if you want to. But what's the point? It's a sim. Go simulate. So yes, it is absolutely worth it, but be prepared to invest quite a lot of time. Do I think it's better than a set of Corsa? I did not used to, and that's one of the reasons I said I stopped looking at it. Nice little slide there. Uh, I do think it is now. Uh, not necessarily better than a set of Corsa, it is different. It has a different user interface paradigm. The cars feel now quite similar, now that I've figured out how to tweak them and, and set up my config. Oops, that was bad. So there's not much in it. If you can get both, I would get both. If you had to choose just one, well, Project Cars is probably the friendlier uh, sim of the two, really. Uh, more accessible in that everything's opened up to you in a career mode from day one. I would probably suggest you go and get Project Cars. Is it the best racing sim ever made? No. I think that privilege still rests with R Factor and its huge mod ability. R Factor 2, of course, and Game Stock Car, which is ultimately a heavy, heavy mod on R Factor 1. Anyway, as always, my name is Frugal. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think. Did you get this? Are you liking it? Are you having the problem I just described where you're sliding off the track all the time for absolutely no reason? And until next time, I will see you all very, very soon.